So today, we have four more gates of Hod. We have a linear gate, a triangular gate, a quadrangular gate, and a pentangular gate. Now, the linear gate is the path of Ayin, or Capricorn. Now, this is a very significant uh, path, very significant gate. Um, <clears throat> The word ayin in Hebrew has two distinct meanings. The first is I, E Y E, um, I that one looks out of, and the other is spring, a spring of fresh water emerging from the, the earth. Okay? And this relates very directly to the significance of uh, Capricorn here, now, okay? The first most important thing about this path is that it confers the power to decide D to the rational intellect. It is the rational intellect that decides and that power descends via this path from, from Yesod to Hod, Capricorn. Now, that power to decide relates back to what I said before about each decision that we make, and we are constantly making decisions. Yes, no, a very binary sort of process that we go through constantly at a mostly subconscious level, even unconscious level, and sometimes a conscious level. But it is this power that consciousness has, that the sentient self has, to decide, and all these decisions are, of course, based on significance. We decide on significance. Now, as a consequence of this power is also the power of discernment, which is part of this path. It passes down by this path into the rational intellect. The power of discernment, we have to discern all the factors in our decision. Okay? That's the power of discernment. Now, <clears throat> the power of discernment relates to the I, E-Y-E, -E, of Ayin. You know, being able to see what is before us. <laughs> being able to see what it is that we are deciding between. Okay. And uh, the power to decide relates to the spring. The spring is a life giver. It's something sacred from the bowels of the earth emerging to give life, okay? And that is what the power of choice is, is it's constantly renewing the cosmos. Every choice that we make, the cosmos adjusts itself to that choice. Every choice is a creative act, really, in the temporal present moment. Okay. So that's where the letter itself relates very directly to the, uh, the power of this path, this linear gate. <clears throat> now, in, in the Sefer Yetzirah, 
the quality of laughter is attributed to Capricorn. We also have in the Tarot, the devil attributed to Capricorn. If that isn't the most laughable image in all of the Tarot, and it's this spirit of, <clears throat> of humor. Um, <clears throat> and it's sort of like the cosmic joke. Okay, now you have the power to choose. <laughs> and that changes everything. It builds that infinite splendor of Hod because it literally changes everything makes everything infinitely more complex when everything that exists at this level has the power of choice, the power to decide for itself. That's the greatest power that we have as Individual human beings is the power to choose, to determine for ourselves what we will do. Sometimes that choice means danger. Sometimes that choice means ease. But we still always have that power to choose for ourselves in every moment of our existence what our fate will be, really, what we will do, what, how we are going to um, change the cosmos. Because every one of our choices makes an ever so small or great change in the cosmos. Okay? So we have here two powers. The power of choice and the power of discernment. Now choice, like I said, is mostly subconscious to unconscious. It's sometimes conscious, sometimes we think we are conscious, but the decision is really made subconsciously. Um, but other times we are fully conscious in our choices. And the more conscious we are in our choices, the, the more we express our own essential meaning. Okay? The other power is discernment. And they're distinct from each other, um, but they both serve the same aim, okay? The expression of self. <clears throat> and part of that expression, <clears throat> part of that process of expressing ourselves is discernment, is <clears throat> perception, okay? Discernment... <sighs> is more than just perception, okay? <clears throat> perception happens in a flash. Discernment takes more effort, <laughs> okay? Because discernment involves interpretation, whereas perception does not involve interpretation. Perception happens before interpretation, but then we come to discernment where we interpret what we have perceived. <clears throat> That's tricky, you know, because we can be wrong in our interpretation. So <clears throat> discernment is a power that can and needs to be refined and exercised and developed. Okay? So, <clears throat> that's the path of Ayin, Capricorn. So, our first gate is the linear gate from 
Yes, Sod, down the path of Capricorn into Hod, and then back up. And from this, <clears throat> we learn about these two powers and where they come from, what their purpose is, what the meaning of this is, what can we do to develop either or both. And from a universal perspective, this is the whole body of sentient selves realizing that it has the power to determine for itself. The whole body has this power, okay? So that's the first gate. The second gate is a triangle. And we start to expand upon our understanding of these powers. And it goes from Yasod down the path of Capricorn to Hod, up the path of Mercury to Gebura, and then down the path of Nun, Scorpio, to uh, Yasod. Okay? and then back around. <clears throat> okay, with this gate, we are learning about the, the role that Gebura plays in <clears throat> the power of choice and the power of discernment. That strongest, most individual aspect of our nature plays a huge role in both of these. It informs the intellect through Mercury and it informs the solitary self through Scorpio. Okay? So... This is really showing us the first degree, shall we say, to which we can empower our sense, our, our powers of choice and discernment, how we can improve, how we can evolve, uh, refine these powers. Now, the next gate is a quadrangle, and it goes from Yesod down the path of Capricorn into Hod, up the path of Mercury to Gebura, up the path of Virgo to Tiferet, and then down the path of the Sun to Yesod. And then back around, okay? Now, <clears throat> this one illustrates the second level that we can take, you know, that we can evolve our powers of discernment and choice. And it is the power of the full consciousness, the Tiferet self. The, the solitary self, the air and fire aspects of the mental body, if we bring those aspects of our awareness, those aspects that perceive essential meaning, into our discernment, into, number one, the perception that precedes discernment, and we bring that down, that awareness, that level of our awareness into our power to choose. And we can then, in that way, make our, our choices fully conscious choices instead of subconscious habitual choices or totally unconscious choices. <clears throat> we can express our little 
reflection of the eye more fully through this gate, okay? That's a very useful gate. <clears throat> okay. okay, the final gate is the pentagram. And here we go up another step. Um, <clears throat> so, it starts in Yesod, follows Capricorn down into Hog, follows Mercury up to Gebura, follows the hidden path up to Cather, and then takes the path of Aries down to Hokma, and then the hidden path from Hokma down to Yesod. And of course, back around. So, <clears throat> this raises it another level. It takes the input from the supernal realm, from Kether and from Hakma. It takes the source of essential meaning and brings it all the way down to Yesod takes Kether and brings it down via Gebura into Hod. So this, this takes one's discernment and one's choosing to an entirely different level. Okay? So, one's choices then take in the whole of the cosmos. Okay. So, I mean, they can then <clears throat> complement the cosmos, fully express <clears throat> the oneself. Okay, so next time will be four more gates of Capricorn and then we will move on to gates of Mem. Okay, till then, bye bye.